Jeg går for... Det er derfor. It's your girl Jojo Renee, and you are tuning into Bite Bullet episode 26. Damn. Oh, language, 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 language. As in, I almost get high. Sorry, people. Just like, damn. So, I think, in spirit of living in the country <laughs> for five months, <laughs> yeah, I true. could speak a little bit of the language. Satu dua tiga, lapan. I know how you know I say. I don't know either. Oh, <laughs> we're going to do 26 in Malay. Malay. Mal- Malay. Yeah, so she said Malay and I was just in Malay. Malay. I didn't Malay. know that. If you didn't know that they speak Malay. In Malaysia, in they Malaysia. speak Malay. I said I was Malaysian. Me too, though. When I heard Malay, I was like, why are you even just saying Malaysian? But 26 is... Dua pulu enam. 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 And he said, Dua pulu enam. And then I, Dua pulu enam. So welcome to episode 26, aka Dua pulu enam. Okay. I like that. That one sounds nice. That one sounds nice. Wow. And then the Alice guy be like, Enam, enam, enam. Dua, dua. I really feel like I was a rapper in my past life. Like I believe so. Right? In, your, in this life too But it's just in my DNA I could feel it Well maybe you should Start dropping some tracks Because I'm waiting You are mad this I, I don't know I don't have the I don't think I have the confidence Well find it Because <laughs> You You have the talent So Go Get a bag And pick up the confidence uh, True 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 But how you doing Let's, let's go into our uh, how are you? How you doing? I'm good. It's been a minute. Yeah, girl. Oh, for true, guys. We haven't been in the studio in a minute. In a minute. Like, the last time we filmed was with Short. So I was like, and the next time. <laughs> and then we filmed a double episode that day. So I was like, a month ago almost. Yeah, basically. Ah, uh, we missed you, couch. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how... Yeah, that's a lot. Oh, let's talk about the panel. You want to talk about the panel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But wait, how are you? No, fuck me. Um, no, the no, panel... No, nah, I'm joking. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> guys... Um, y'all see the hair, right? I put we put an all night for this shit. That is insane. I lost a day of sleep. Like I'm in sleep that by eight hours because I didn't even go to sleep the next day. But it was so weird because we did my hair. We started at three. We finished at nine. Shout out to Black HC. Set me up. And then in my head, I was like, "Cool, I gonna take a nap." But then I end up going back to Rotterdam, and then I tell you, you know, we had like a movie night, whatever, whatever. And I went to sleep at, at night. So in my head, I was like, yo, I actually lost a full day. Full day. 24 hours. Yeah. And I feel like maybe your brain cells just deplete. So if I say something stupid, guys, have some grace. I just be like, yo, it's crazy to think you just put all yourself through. It is, though. Like, the last time I did this was university. What do you mean? To stay up all night? Yeah. Now? I never, even in my life, like, it was never that serious. You never pull out all night? I was never that serious. <laughs> Guys, you know how many times I pull it on, but I am the type of person like I work so well under pressure. I'm but telling to you, me I the could pressure create a is that like I gotta go sleep by nine. And this so <laughs> like <laughs> that's the pressure you work with. Be, nah, I hear my it. Mother, but from small, my mother used to be like, you know, you can't like I have to sleep. I do. I can't. I can't do them all night. Us type thing. Bye. So she would be like, you know, you gotta do your work. Do it before you gotta go sleep because you know you're not gonna stay up. I nah, couldn't. it's facts. I really couldn't. But I just mean, like, that's why they have the meme where it's like, if I could have leave my head at the salon, come back for it, like, that would be perfect. <laughs> I did. I wish I could do that. That would be so perfect. But we survived, though. And I heal. So, yeah, that's me. I'm good. Yeah, okay. I made okay. it quick and short because, guys, we had a panel. Yes. Shout out to everybody that came. Simata was the water pony. building. Yo, in SM was building. in the building. Like Dano. Charity, everybody, 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 like literally, one side of the room was for us. Yeah, true. Like you just see, and it was, guys, it was so nice to just see your supporters and to be able to speak to them, to have them like engage with them, ask us questions. It was almost like a live, but like (laughs) and Kev in person. (laughs) Yeah, like honestly, and just. I think doing it with you made me more comfortable because mm-hmm. it was my first panel. So I was vi in the beginning. I was like, but you know, actually, help when they mistakenly said I was from SM. 
The vibe. And I, yeah, because I was like, so we, we behind like a curtain and we have to come out. And what they say, um, two girls from SM. I said, SM! <laughs> And then everybody laughed, and I feel like that was a good start because. What? Oh my god, I forget his name. The host. Because you forget his name. Um, no. Um, G. Gian. Yes, I gotta look for it just now. But he was just vibes. Nah, man, we gotta really look Yo, for his name. I want Gian to do. No. No. Gilberto. 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 Yeah. I. I don't oh. please we so sorry sorry we so sorry it's been a couple of weeks it's been 24 hours with no sleep but like <laughs> i don't know you know some people just a vibe like you really deserve yeah. your own youtube channel whatever you want like if you're on tiktok cause... we even tell him we're gonna have him on the couch yeah. because the way he could command a room and just guide a conversation it made us feel so comfortable mm -hmm. like if you like we didn't have it really where we would get stuck, but I knew that if I was to get stuck, he, he would pick it up he, for he me. He pick you right out the mind. So it made me less. It made me feel less pressure to mm -hmm. like make sure I say what I need to say. Yeah. I just it, it just flowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, it was like our first live live experience, and we definitely want it. to double Do in that. One of those days, mm -hmm. yeah. But what else happened? Like in the past, we want to kind of catch you up know what's so funny? Last episode we was like. And a bunch of other shit will happen by the time this episode oh, comes out. Oh, yeah. We literally so what still has are. happened? But it's just like... A bunch of shit has happened, though. A bunch of shit, shit has, has happened. happened. Like, a bunch <laughs> of shit has happened. Like, just in the world. Like, you had the Grammys. Yeah. Wait, that was what we first said. question. So you had Tyler winning water, mm -hmm. a Grammy for water. Genuine question and question for the people watching too. If are you big on Afro, do you feel like she should have win over Berna, over Davido, and over Ida Star? See, but that's the thing with Grammys, where it's just like a big discussion. Because I think some people think the artists that they are putting in the work the longest deserve the Grammy at this point, which is what I feel. But I feel like mm. the Grammy really check in as of 2023 who deserved a Grammy. But, but even as of 2020, yeah, unavailable. But I, on, I even checked now, Tyler, me? and that's something else I want to talk about. Because mm. Tyler blew up on TikTok. She now. blow blow. Make me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But unavailable they didn't do that as much with the numbers. Uh. And yet, like none of them songs do as much as water. But I feel like if you want to look at the entire album, burner for me with a. <laughs> Competition. Yeah. And then just like, I feel like Bruno had like two albums in one year. And, and he was it killing it for that. But the... like, and all he tore in, I feel like they deserve it. I'm not going to lie. But one but person her to one win. song really blew up way more than their song. And I feel like her song was way more, it was I'm a piano, but it was more pop in a sense where it's like it speaks to a lot more people yeah. way more than Afro did. Even True. though Afro making waves now. Yeah. But it was like watered down, I'm a yeah. piano. And I slash hear you. Afro vibes. I don't feel like she did deserve it. But if you look at how did this really look per year and not Yeah. Based on the, the criteria and the But I don't even know what's the criteria, I guess. I think to check like the billboard and all of those kind of things. Probably. But yeah, then we had Jay Z telling people they don't <laughs> even belong in the category. But he up there accepting accepting an award. I had and I read that. Yeah. I'm going to accept this award and make sure I, I put some respect <laughs> on my wife's name because why the fuck Taylor Swift? Tell me one song from her album. No, Tell me I the think name it's of us. her album. I think it's really us. <sighs> I see this, um, are you know, on X, Twitter. Like, somebody was like, maybe it's just me, but um, did she sing Party in the USA? Like, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> da fuck up. Da Fuck like up. I realized a lot of I don't know if it's a generation thing or a race thing. Like a lot of us don't know her songs. No, but I feel like she she really caters to a specific group of people. But and they but, happen to be Caucasian. But her tour was as big as Renaissance from Beyonce. And but, that's to show you. Hmm. I really think we just out of tune with those things. I is us. It's definitely us. I mean, I used to listen to her when she was like, um, when she was with Taylor Lot now. Yeah, but I don't even know. Like, do you remember the songs from them times? Um, call me maybe. <laughs> no, that's not. Her. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you song see? She had? No, but princess, somewhere princess. Anyways, twenty five. Um, she had when a song she was twenty five, she had a neighbor. And like she was a nerd in her music video, and yes. they were sending each other yes. notes from across, and mm -hmm. then they fall in love or some shit. I forget that. I oh don't know the song either anymore, but I know the. But the I remember Beyonce songs from back then. Exactly. 
That's Even the Katy shit. Perry songs from back then, I remember. Like, but it's Taylor a level Swift. of, like, Taylor Swift. I don't know. I just feel like with Beyonce, the impact she's been making, the fact that she still hasn't won Crazy. a Grammy. She hasn't, she has the most Grammys, but she hasn't won Album I mean, for of album the year, of the year. Yeah, and that's crazy because her albums are the year. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Period. But, but yeah. not. And then you had, um, I just never pronounced his name right. Virgin Islands and his Marascont. Yeah, you need to run me, run, give me a rundown on that. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Sorry, I'm going to be close. Isn't it Kyron? Virgin Island and his Marascont. Huh? Kyron? Kyron. I think it's Kyron. Rock City? Yeah. Yeah. But a lot, because it was like the first real Caribbean person going up on stage. Of course, you had Rihanna. Yeah. But like with the real, I feel like Rihanna used to water down her accent. Yes. Like, or she still does. But this man went up there and speak in the accent yeah. and was like Virgin Islands in his mother's skull. And a lot of people feel like, you know, it's not proper to talk that way. Da 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 da. And what do you think? Virgin Islands in his mother's skull. I think if I, I ever had to go on a stage to accept a while like that, like, you are going to hear the accent. But I feel like you can hear the accent differently. Like, I hear it, but playing devil's advocate, you're in a country where cunt is worse than fuck. Mother's and cunt? you say mother scunt. Like, in the state, saying cunt is like saying worse, is worse than saying fuck. Mm-hmm. I love how we was talking about how we not going to cuss. Like, we try not to cuss, guys. Yeah, we try we cussing, But this is just for this segment. Um, I get it. Bring your accent. Make sure people who you know who you mm-hmm. are. But there's a level of, like, you at the Grammys. Like, be fucking for real. <laughs> in a sense, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, but like, I hear it. I don't think we should ever water ourselves down, but I think there's a time and place. I feel like accepting a word at the Grammys, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say mother scunt, even though that's the, like, virgin, VGI, even guy, but I think even say that already. But I don't, I see it as just this, that's just, I don't see it as cussing, I see that as no. we, as a saying, like when you say Oh, wow, we really on a segment about cussing and we're not trying to cuss. Yeah, this probably going to be the last segment we do about cussing. Because <laughs> it's like, if you are saying this bitch, that is True. way more... It's not him. Exactly. Yeah. But like, how else would you say this? Like, Virgin Islands in the building. Maybe just say something else. As in, we're rich. Like, I don't know. We do something. Like, you know, like, it's a level of... um. Yeah, the Grammys is such a, a, what you call it, prestigious event where it's like you should be able to have a level of um, authenticity Mm -hmm. without, say, if you took out the mother scunt, it shouldn't take away from you still being authentic. There's just a different way you could approach it because of the environment you're in. I don't know. I don't look at it that way. Remember the book I was talking about with the hood feminism thing? Yeah. Where it's like, this is exactly what she's talking about. Where did it like really try to get us as people to water down who we are to fit this narrative of what's accepted and what's not. But, like, say you're a student in school and you win an award. You but that's different than, like, culture. Like, there's certain settings, I get what you mean, with there's certain settings, like, where you have an influence on yeah. children, that's different. Like, I'm not going to go in front of the class. No, with that, I don't mean it's because it's kids. I just mean it's because you're in school, so it's not appropriate, or you're in a hospital. Say, say Kairan was doing something for hospitals, mm-hmm. and he get an award for doing something and he go up and say, Virgin Islands in this mother scunt. You in a hospital. But then, a then it's like, then you know what award for. Of course, if you deal for that, <laughs> like, I'm going to yeah. go to cussing. But if it's just, I don't know, I guess music is like, it's a, a form of expression. It's a Facts. form of just being authentic and who you be. So I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. But of course, if you go up there for like, being, I don't know, humanitarian or something, it's a nah, different type of thing, I guess. <laughs> but then you have but I don't know I feel like we're really harsh on Caribbean people because they went up there in different categories rap or whatever and yeah. have said things over the years and it's never that big of a deal but I feel like we just really make Caribbean people people feel like how we speak is inappropriate and I get cussing in itself is inappropriate but sometimes like like I don't you know it's crazy mm. up until before this I didn't feel like mother scunt was a way of cussing like that specific word. Yeah, no, because it's so normal to us. But that's what I mean. Like for us, it's normal. I hear it. Mother scunt is just mother scunt. Yeah, like but your mother scunt. You know, you in the states, and my thing is, you know, you in a country where the word in mother scunt cunt is so like them people really take that shit heavy. Because from the shows I watch, I guess. But in scunt, no cunt is bad. Mother, scunt. and it is mother scunt. 
but <laughs> you know they know it's a cuss word. So, but it was not even the Americans coming for him; it's the Caribbean people coming for him. Oh, yeah, like the I people from the people at the Grammys. No, like the people from the Virgin Islands was like, "Why are you representing us like that?" And I don't know mm-hmm. though. Like, I the, the people in America probably didn't even like see it yeah. as a big of a deal. True, and that's why me was like, we brainwashed to think that how we are is inappropriate and I don't see it as inappropriate. I see it as that's just how we are. Because what's the I difference mean, if like we are talking like this all the time but because now I'm in front of the Grammys I don't want to continue with the narrative of like this is how we be. But I'm going to be the most advocate again. I feel like and this is probably an unpopular opinion or whatever, mm-hmm. but I feel like how we are and how we grow up I rate it in a sense of like it is my culture mm-hmm. but I need to realize in some cases how it could insult other people even though i know that it is authentic to me and there's a level of like i could adjust that in a environment that i know it is not not that it's not welcome mm-hmm. but that it is not fitting because caribbean people we do have a party mouth mm-hmm. but i don't think that's an excuse to now use our party mouth in anywhere any and everywhere mm-hmm. like even when i was in school when i speak to my friends like on the road mm-hmm. or just I speak differently to when I speak to my classmates because I, I know they're not going to really catch my drift in a sense. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't feel like it took away from who I am. I just feel like it allowed me to adapt. So I I think Caribbean people, we should be true to ourselves. Don't be yanking for mm-hmm. people out here just so they can understand you. Allow them to understand you. But gr- the party mouth culture, I feel to a level... Mm, yeah, I get why people could be upset about that. Like, mm. we just cuss a lot. Yeah. And for us, is is white noise to a level. When you hear mother scunt, is like hair and juice, mm-hmm. you know? But I know that for other people, it's different. It's a level of like, yo, that's that's a bit, you know? I don't feel like we do it any differently than any other culture. And what, like, you feel like America, like when Americans say, what the fuck? They cuss a lot. White people cuss a lot. Like, Dutch people up here, they cuss a lot. But that's why I mean, it was like, but there's a nasty. Worse. But, like, we are, like, I feel like every culture cuss. But my point is, we have this narrative that Caribbean way of doing it is way more inappropriate or something. And I feel like mm. that comes down with how they view us and the indoctrination of just us being vulgar. Mm. And yes, we do have a party mode, but it's not that different. Like if you go go on like Crota Mark in Den Haag with a bunch of Dutchmen just the uh, drinking and walking around, yeah. like do you know how much times it is be cussing? No. If you go around frat boys, like like they have so every culture have their way of expressing and cussing or whatever. Mm. But I don't feel like we do it that much or any different than they do. Yeah. But of course you just gotta know. But lost from like apart from the Grammys, of course at work you're not gonna be cussing. Of no. course, like if you're in a meeting, you're not gonna be cussing. I think people adapt, like what you say, like if you're at school, you adapt. Even us on the panel. Exactly. I feel like we was like, um guys, can we curse? But I yeah. still wouldn't want to curse because I feel like No, like that dying. Environment. Even though I think thing the thing did cuss a little. Yeah. But like but they even say we could, but not exaggerate yeah. it. And it's just like I think all cultures have the way of it. Like, when you learn a language, when you, like, if you meet an Arabic friend and you ask them things, the first thing they teach you is the yep. cuss words. And I, that's why I just, like, I hear it, but at the same time, like, I don't get why we have so much pressure to adapt and fit this narrative of having to be, like, But question, like, clean other people in the Grammys, they was cussing too? I didn't watch the Grammys, but also oh. his segment was also the Tyler segment. They had a pre-Grammys before the actual Grammys. So it wasn't even like all the celebrities that was in the room. Mm. It was like a more smaller... Because apparently they just have two. Grammys. Like, because they can't do all the Grammys in one in one show, like, the one that was ill. Yeah. So him on, the Tyler on was like the one before. Yeah. And then the actual Grammys that was aired... Yeah. Was after. Was after. Hmm. so I don't know if that also play a role in it but I also really generally me I don't see the problem in it because his whole speech was really genuine like it was a nice story how we talk about where he come from and coming from where he was in the Virgin Islands and his yeah. father and da 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 and then he just ended off with that one line like and um because <laughs> <like that. laughs> <laughs> like really I don't want to more yeah but and it's just like to me it's a statement of we here. And I don't feel like it's that deep of, 
or he cuss or whatever. I hear it. Yeah. And like, I, you ever see one Issa Rae speeches? Like, she just cuss too. Yeah. But because she just do it so eloquently and like, what yeah, she's saying is always so feedback. funny. It's just, yeah, people don't perceive it that way. Nah, I hear it. But, yeah. Hmm. That but that was the Grammys. You also see that they um they had announced that Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice win something, and then there was like oh shit. Oh, they didn't, like, didn't um they give the wrong they say, award to Nicki and it was actually for Ice Spice. No, they they come out and say Princess Diana win a uh, Grammy, but then it was like they didn't. It was actually something else, and everybody was just like, you see, this is what she always talking about. They always playing with her, like the industry, yeah, and this is why she's be getting so upset. Which is one of the things that happened since we last yeah, record. She was upset with Meg. Yo, if you have Twitter, it's bad. <sighs> but you know what it is? Like men beef constantly, like in rap. Mm-hmm. It is. It's just the dynamic. Mm-hmm. But when women beef is different. I don't know, like. The way this beef pan out, for one, I don't rate Nikki. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. The barbs, y'all could come for me. Mm-hmm. I don't care. There's some scary but people. But sending your fans to dig up somebody but mother grave. But she didn't grave, do that. But a level of like you, you, what you call it? You know that you put in certain lyrics in your music and you know your fans will die for you. They will cut themselves, put blood in a jug mm-hmm. and give it to you. Mm-hmm. So it's that level of like, okay, cool. You didn't tell them directly, go to this woman, mother grave and dig it up. But in your song, you kind of hint at, you know. Like you're making like. Is your mother the... really there? So now your fans go want to know, is she? She didn't say that. What did she say? She was just trying to say that like Megan used her mother's death a lot to, um, I don't know. Cushion herself? Kind of. Wait, what's but, your whole view on it though? The thing is, I'm really tired of it. Like, to be, I, I like, even my brother, no, like, he come message me, but he's like, I don't even have the energy to talk about it like that. But what I do, what I did take away from it is just like how crazy her fans, like, the vibes is for real, for real. Yo. But also, like, and I, I hear this also on another podcast, but I was also thinking before that, like, I don't think Nicki Minaj knows who she is. Mm. Like, you think because I was on Twitter, who they is? as in like not like on that level, like oh. you Nicki Minaj, like if you were on Twitter, Jordi, oh. like you were seeing her literally spiraling, oh. like you she was tweeting for days and all day, and it's just like why are you giving this so much energy? Yeah, I saw um a meme with SpongeBob. There was a scene from SpongeBob where he's like going crazy, <laughs> and that was her. <laughs> Yeah, and they were saying this is Nicki Minaj right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I really, as you say, like I, I find it was a level, a different level of low to talk about somebody than mother. Um and getting shot using the getting well, I mean I, I get the getting shot part because like a lot of battle, other, yeah, even Drake and all of them yeah, do it. So it was not like she doing anything plus different. In rap battles you do have digs. So it yeah. makes sense. And yeah, I don't know. Like I, the, that part of it is just like, yeah, we know she went really low. Yeah, I do feel like a lot of what she said about Meg was like, hmm, interesting. I didn't know that. Like, if yeah. she is lying, it's like, okay, okay, I didn't know this. But I was just like, back to the whole thing when, like, yeah, men, we look at men differently for the beef. And it's like, I remember when Pusha T come out and tell us about Drake's son. That was wild. Like, we didn't know Drake had a son until but Pusha we, T said. We took that as, yo, this man smoked him. Like, like but if you really think about it, that is really low. It, it's lower than low, but it's uh it's met with a different energy. Yeah. I guess because we don't give men enough um space to have an emotional reaction, we think oh yeah no. But at that time I didn't like it. <laughs> no, nah, I hear it. I hear but it. Because I, I, I was just like too. I had really I was really a Drake fan at that time. But like um <laughs> I was just like that's wild. <gasps> but at the same time like that is where I don't know. Oh, it's shit. a thing of moral com- I don't know a moral Sorry. compass thing. I I can't slip this in now because oh. I was gonna say his penis. Um, <laughs> wow, <while> pun intended. <laughs> But that's also something that happened. Wait, we got to... Yo, so much shit happened. Guys. That's crazy. <sighs> but, but no, anyways. um... We undressed that just now. Put a yeah. pin in it. I see. But I... What was... No, but it's crazy because it's like you don't want to sit on here and compare what is worse to yeah. talk about when you're talking about both of them bad in the same... Yeah. But I guess people always just be like, you don't play with that, you know? 
you don't it's fucked it really is fucked for yeah. me that's where it went really low like the whole Drake having a child thing it was messed up because you didn't for one Drake probably don't want didn't want his child you know but that's really low it though. is low I think it about low. it now like let's say I'm really trying to hide the world from my Hide the hide world from your my child kitchen. From the okay. world. Yeah, and you come out and just tell the world. No, that is messed up. It is messed up. So you can't really compare it. I just feel like men beefing and women beefing is just met with different um energy. Yeah. Like honestly, I feel like people really like, oh my gosh, why Nikki and Meg going out to da da da? But when it was drinking, push your tea, people were like, oh, I wonder what's coming up next. Yeah. Even Stormzy and Wiley. That was bad. I know about it. That, that one was also really funny. Yo, up. I was fall. I was waiting for Stormzy to drop his response because that, but this man clean up Wiley. Like the way he come back and he did say some fucked up stuff. Mm-hmm. He, he mentioned Wiley, mother, everything. But it's just a level of like, yeah, for us it's like, oh shit. Maybe that's something we need to address in ourselves. Like man them out here really coming for each other and y'all just checking like, oh, they'll be fine. They'll brush it off. True. But yeah. And it's funny because in Meg's song, like, she get awards or she break records or something for his. Both of them. Yeah. But it was funny because when Meg released with all her song break records, it was mostly the Caribbean. Oh. Legit. Like, I want to pull it up. Mm. They even had, like, sing kids, Belize. <laughs> like, so then I was wondering, like, is it just the Caribbean people who, like, Nikki went and listened to the song? Yeah. But, like, of course, she was in the United States and mm. certain parts in, I think, that the Netherlands and stuff, too. But it was just funny for me to see that it wasn't, like, a lot of, it was just a lot of Caribbean countries on the list. Um, but, back to Drake's penis. But, no, wait. I want to see the picture. Sorry, guys. I know Haiti have a picture. We have a picture of the video. I hope it's still oh, there. Oh, there's a it's, video? There's a video that going around. But no, but to end it off on the, with the Nikki thing, like, I don't, I really don't want, I don't know how you feel, but I just, what? I just don't want to give it that much energy. I also don't like playing with that. So it's not something like I really want to talk about like that. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just like, no, I feel like she needs to know. Because if you the shit, and that had me make me question something. You're not even I, the fart. Sorry. <laughs> that was another beef. That was another beef. Uh, that was another yeah, beef. That, but like, beef. Um, let's get along, guys. I guess they're not beef, right? Like, let's say you, you arguing with somebody. You feel like you if you, the one that's staying quiet and not giving energy, because at this point, my name is really winning. Doing, like, if they're yes. winning. Yeah. Because you're not feeding into exactly what... You're not giving another person power. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, if somebody coming for you and you keep biting, yeah, you giving them power. You look like the one you. that bothered to me. Like, yeah. if you the one they all... And that's what I mean, like, because I was on Twitter as this woman was spiraling. If if I see you, they are bothered. Literally, like, like commenting on people's tweets, like, fans Crazy. and random people. I hear she was even on TikTok in the comments on people. It's just like... What and then I, she was in a chat room, a room on Twitter with Joe Budden. Like she entered the room and they was talking about it to like defend herself. And she was like, "A pe- think people is people is think I they are going crazy by really on the floor laughing while like tweeting these things." But it's though? like, are but at the same though? time, it's like, why are you there on the floor exactly. tweeting? Like, go and go in the studio, continue writing and, I and don't rap. Believe she on the floor laughing. Otherwise, she you don't believe like her? She have to come and defend. No, because it's a level of like then laugh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then laugh. Yeah. Why you gotta be coming for people like you ha 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 he he when you cussing people is a bit sad and that's that I energy don't it align. Is sad. It really is sad, yeah. And that's why I'm just like You know what's not worried. sad? This video you're about to show me. So yeah. I really want It's to not see. nasty, but Kristen, you wanted to see it too. Oh my god. <laughs> It's a big lodge. Oh, was I really screaming? It's a huge, it's a huge team. I feel like Crystal, you need to come for my phone. <laughs> Crystal, come see this. You want to Please. See no. Crystal's like, should I? Crystal? Ah. Crystal. <laughs> No, pe- people were saying it's sizable, but that? <sighs> that is wild. That's Guys, wild. nah. Jada fuck. Dog. Jada fuck. Cut. Jada fuck. Who am I? Jada fuck. And Jada fuck. Pack. That, yo. What? 
I keep it in the okay. mic. So I know I wouldn't have like. I didn't yeah. know he was packing like that. That even packing. This man have to get a. He have to charter a flight for that. What the hell? <laughs> what the That's hell? Wow, was. Drake. Mm-hmm. Wow, Drake. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is actually crazy. I didn't realize. You know what's so crazy? I was literally Friday before each class start. You know, you see the Drake video. I was like. But is that him for real? That, ain't, that ain't, is him. God, please. That wow. is him. But I was just like, wow, that you trending on this level that 13 and 14 year old in the Netherlands have now seen your penis. No, but everybody was talking about his penis. Everybody. When I open social media, all I hear is Drake penis. Yeah. Yeah. But it's actually crazy. I feel like if the girl, it gotta be a girl that was just sitting down, right? Hopefully. <laughs> But like, if you my friend, <laughs> if you my friend and you do that, like I'm gonna take you to have your last lunch, so you can what? see. Cause the way this man gonna sue you, sue Drake probably eating this up. He's like, I needed an excuse for people to see what I work with. You I have a rocket that? ship in my pants. Nah, you, think you don't think he would like that? sue the girl? I read. It's actually any legal now to like pull shit. Like yes, hundred percent. But I genuinely think sometimes these celebrities don't mind their peen being shown. I think Drake don't mind. Mm. What, what would you do? Somebody asked me this at the time, though. What would you do if somebody released a oh, sex of tape? Me? Or just, I would yeah. sue them. You would care that your body online? Yes. Okay. This is my body. Okay. I don't want anybody and everybody No, no, no. It. You would care that. I think it's, in general, you don't like that they do that without your consent. But I mean, Hands like. Down. You think. I would never give them consent. Yeah, no. But that's the difference with Drake. I feel like he wouldn't directly give consent, but for him, it's a level of like, like you remember the dude from Wilding Out? Um, I can't remember which one you're talking about. The one you have conceited and Hitman Holler. Hitman mm-hmm. Holler is the taller mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. His he had like a sex tape or something that get leaked, and I think he enjoyed it because he also packing. So for him, it was like, yeah, it's it's messed up that I get leaked, but uh, you see that junk though, you know. I feel like that's how I would feel. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so for you in your head, you try to like if you was to do a sex tape and get leaked. No, I mean in like, the no sense of like Sorry. no, but I mean more so in the sense of like I would be really like it would I would it gonna bother me. It gonna yeah. bother me that the world looking at my body, exactly. especially with my profession, da 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 da. That you do that without my consent, da 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 da. But yeah. I think it's two levels to the story where some people just feel like um, they don't want because like. For example, in the in Europe in general, they're very open with just you go in the gym, people walking around naked. You walk past a window, they don't mind being naked. And I feel like we grow up very well, much. What gym? In the gym, I don't see so much women naked. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, but that's fine. In Saint Martin, that's not normal. Um, no, but in the night, <laughs> nah, I get it. But that's it. what I, I mean. It. In the sense of like, we grew up with really this feeling of like, oh my god, people can't see me naked. No, whereas like. Um, no, I know the internet is a different level. Yeah, now. but I mean, like the the thought of like people seeing you naked, we really like, <gasps> we really see it as like this uh thing. Some people though, because my but some don't people give really up. don't, uh. and that's what I mean. Like oh. some people really don't, and I think like to a level, that's how I guess hit Hitman, Hitman Hala or yeah. Drake feel like. It is what it is. It is what it is. Like, you're not going to die if people see you naked as a body part at the end of the day. And I think back in the day, like, in Europe and stuff like that, it was just normal. But yeah, but I think there's a parts. difference too where it's like, if Drake and Hitman Holla was in packing so much, then they would feel a type of way about it. It's a weird conversation to have in a sense of like, For sure. it's messed up. But at the end of the day, I think man them don't mind if people see their dick. They, when they have a proper, you know. Yeah. I think that's also part of the conversation. Yeah, because if they wasn't packing, then they would sue. I think the sue amount, say now Drake sued a girl, he would sue her for a million. But if he had half, not even half, because half is still okay. If he had one third of the mm-hmm. size, he would sue for like 10 million. Because now is a thing of you showing my package, but they ain't got much package. But now that I got much package, ooh, that's a chip off my shoulder. Mm. Where it's like, for a man, it's like, yeah, that's fine. I ain't gonna sue her because... <laughs> Now I yeah. have an excuse. Okay. So I have a question. So let's say somebody like, you got to pay me. Of course, you they're going to never reach out because you could take them to jail. Yeah. 
they rather extort you before they even release your sex tape. Would you just be like, rather release it? Who, me? Yeah. Bye. And like, that's what I mean. We're like, I to the in the in the essence, like to the core of it, and just be like, okay, release it. To be honest, in this state now, release it because nobody really knows. Like, I'm not a big superstar or whatever, but. Mm. I mean, like, that's what I mean. Like, how how much would it bother you if somebody is, like, you want willing to extort you because they're going to show your body? Like, how much is it a bother that the world are people seeing you? For me, it is a bother because, for one, I don't want my child because what is on the internet stays on the internet forever. I don't want my child to come out of my freaking poom mm-hmm. and then years later, they're seeing that same poom online. I feel like that my child won't see my poom. No, there's a difference. She, so we're still going to see my poo. Mm-hmm. But in, a, in a, a way that's like, for one, you have comments that are carried with it. Mm-hmm. For two, you have just that. Because mm, it's just, just a nude, talk. I don't know. Because now I think it's sex tape. <clears throat> it's different. I guess the sex tape. Yeah, are... I'm sorry. I'm not on it. My child don't need to see what so I do. So then you would pay the person. Yeah, probably. Depending mm-hmm. on the price. I don't want, like, I'm sorry, but. That is for me and whoever I doing it with mm. to to experience. And mm-hmm. if we have a, a audience, we gonna choose who the audience is. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah, like I'm not gonna have my shit just out here for everybody and anybody to see. I like the mystery of my body, and I like for the the at least the power I feel to know that not everybody have access to it, right? Whether it's seeing it or being in it. I get you. I don't think I'd care. I was just about to ask, like for you, I. Uh, I know I would care, by not paying you to like. I'm not so gonna somebody pay you. say um ten k. I'm not I paying you ten k. Like I'm not. Huh. Like I'm really take not. I'll you to court, but yeah, I'm taking you to court. But then by that time, I probably don't release. You know what I mean? By mm. not paying you the ten k, like I'm not gonna like. And I guess it. Like I really feel like what you say. I don't want people to feel like they have access to knowing. How, but at the end of the day, like, <laughs> back to my saying I'm not going to die. But, like, you know, like, that, I, I, I really saying. not paying the 10K. Because then I feel I like you feel it. like you definitely have, I don't know. I mean, it's I'm a highly not, unlikely situation unless, yeah, like, an yeah. ex does it or something. But for me, if I have it, I pay in it. Cone. Like, if I got 10K, I'm going to be like, yo, that's that. if I have it. And that's why I wonder if, like, that's kind of what happened with Drake. Like, let's say they did say that, like, give me the money or something. He probably would just, like, release it. That's what I mean. Like I think, to in the essence of it, a lot of people just like, but what gonna happen? Really, if people see me naked. Like, you still not going to have access yeah. to my actual body. Like I'm not gonna just go out there and give it to anybody. And that's what, how I feel. But yeah. I, it will still bother me. But I'm not paying somebody money just to not. I don't know. I find. I hear it. Yeah. For me, it's just <laughs> not. Nah, fuck you. You not just taking my sex tape. Fire for that. Yeah, but I hear it because a lot of sex. But I feel like sex tapes are also quite like white noise now, in a sense mm-hmm. of the, even if you look at Kim Kardashian and stuff like that. But like even like that, like I would you are you not as watching the show? Yeah. Like she was devastated when I think Saints get like an ad of, mm. about her her sex tape. Yeah, because it's quite like I don't know. I think I also <laughs> see sex very deep mm-hmm. in a in a lot of essences, and I think for me. Yeah, there's a lot. I don't want to speak too much because I know my parents will watch this. Mm-hmm. But there's just a level of like the stuff I do and the things I explore, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. I like to know that that's sacred to me. But I, me too. But I still feel like I'm not paying you to not put that out there. Because then, at, 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 what, what, at what point does it stop then? When I don't have, you don't have my sex tape. Like, no, I mean, like, because then the person could keep. What that you can just forever keep paying no, them? No, but they the payment parameters has to be they give me the original file and they have to prove that there's no copies. You, don't, you cannot guarantee. I that. cannot, but there's a way to do that, and that would be done before. By the time we get to court, you could do that for sure. But I just mean like at a certain point, then people can just keep escort, extorting, extorting you. Yeah, no, but that's why I only pay in if I could get the. I only pay in if there is a guarantee that the files are deleted. That's the only way I'm paying. I'm not paying you. And then you say you're not going to post it. That's dumb for, okay. in my eyes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure there's a tech guy involved or AI could pull up and help me out to make sure any trace of this video you don't have. Because then what sense does it make to pay but that, I don't think that's possible. Like, for example, Girl, Kim, technology. Kim K6 tape still out there. Yeah, because it's been posted. 
that's the difference. If if I film something with my camera mm-hmm. and now I have the video, if I ain't send it to nobody else, and of course you don't know that, but you find out, and then I now come to you and be like, yeah, I'm gonna post this video. It's not posted yet, which means it's not out there. I don't know. If it's on the cloud, I don't know if it could be like spread out. Yeah, but I don't know. Is that level of like I gonna make sure there's going to be a contractual agreement? I will pay you the 10k, but we you sign in a contract that states if any of this footage comes to if, light. I mean, if somebody coming to you to say give me 10k for a video, they're not giving a fuck about no contract, and they're not giving. No, the contract a has a, a breach. I mean, like they're not disclaimer. signing. No, I feel like. But they will have to. I don't think they would. But then why are you coming to me to extort me? I don't know, for the money to see how much they could get. But then at the same time, they could also make money by just putting it on certain places. Yeah, but I'm a nobody, so they dumb for that. I know. I mean, let's else. think on, let's, we take it unrealistically here in general. No, that's, it's I realistic feel like the to person, give somebody a contract to state that if you breach the um agreements of this contract, you will have a $1 million fine. That's why I would put in the contract. And if they sign that and that video gets released and I could prove that they're the only person who had that video, they got to pay up. And it's worse than me suing them. Because yeah. now I have grounds and they screwed. I don't know. I just, I guess, I think in, like anybody that would ex- start to come to you in general, like they don't have no respect for you. So I don't know if they would really sign anything. They to, don't have any loyalty uh, either. Huh? I say they don't have any loyalty. Like they don't know you. So that's why I would bring the contract. <laughs> you don't know. Like that was like the Pam, I forgot her name, Pam Anderson documentary. I don't know if you had watched that. Mm-mm. Where she was like, like to this, like I can't remember how what exactly happened, but they just they, oh they come in her house and steal the her sex tapes that she had with her mm-hmm. husband, and then yeah they just keep selling it and selling it <laughs> and selling it and selling it, and then eventually like they track down who it was and sue them that that. But at that yeah. point like it's already out there. It's already out there. Yeah, but, that's different though. Once it's out there, it's out. Especially with the internet. Once it's online, you know them them tweet and deletes. Like, once you put it out there, it's yeah. out there. There's uh-huh. nothing. And then I would just have to come to terms with her. But if it's not out there, I'm I'm sorry. But for me, I gonna make sure it don't get out there. I don't want my sex tape out there. If you go see my poom poom, I gonna <laughs> decide whether you see my poom poom. I hear it. <laughs> I just not paying the 10K. No, I know. You check it like I'll, I'll live. Yeah. Nah, I hear it completely. But, mm. but yeah. <laughs> That was a lot. How we get to so from Drake Peen? Oh, guys, y'all should go check out the video. I like, mean, if you could find it, but of course, it's everything you can always find on Twitter. Already, Twitter. yeah. But, but I was just like, yeah, because I was also beef with Jada, but we didn't even talk about our uh, oh, Jada and stuff. But I feel like that dead now. But it definitely is. It but it good. just it made me realize that like it's Don't beef in the air. Yeah, but everybody just they got time on their hands, man. I feel like oh. even even just the culture we in now, people just got time to be upset with people. Oh my gosh, y'all know what happened to me? Which was so fucked. Sorry. I think on the ADHD thing. Yeah, tell me. Oh, it was rude. This happened like a, a little while back. But just, it reminds me of people just having so much time to be upset with people. I'm going to Albertine, right? Mm-hmm. That's our supermarket. And I'm always on my bike. I park my bike. And I just put it up, but I move it a little bit to be out of the wind because it was really windy. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking into Albertine, but something tell me to turn back. I turned back. This is my bike parked. There's this woman who comes and she just goes, she just pulls down my bike. Like she pushes it down. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Because are you taking fun? Yeah. But how? Like, but why? Just, I don't know. For I don't fun. know. It's just, just for fun. And then they had another girl walking and she see it. And I watch her and I like, yeah, you see that, right? And she was like, yeah. And then I was like, what the fuck? And the woman just walking off, but she walk off quick. And I wanted to go behind her and push her and be like, okay, now what? Because like, you, you push into people's stuff for what? Hey, it was so out of the blue. It was so out of the blue. But you didn't ask her. I didn't no, because she done dip. And then I went and So she just walking around. Like pushing bikes. And you know what it is? When I was putting up my bike, so I was putting it by a pole. Mm -hmm. When I moved it so it's out of the wind, I saw her walking, like past Mm -hmm. me. Which means she came back to pull down my bike. Mm -hmm. I think she saw me move the bike so that my bike doesn't fall. And she was like, I want to fuck up her day. I want her bike to fall. Because you could see why I'm moving the bike. The wind was hitting up from a certain direction. So I just, and when I look back, by the time if I was walking, she she would have been gone. She walked back to pull down my bike. Just so. And when I dipped from, because I went Albertine, because I needed to go quick, quick for something. 
And then I had to go to Den Haag to pick up another bike. Mm-hmm. So I went in quick to go get my thing. And then I on the bike and I looking for her. <laughs> just, just, just to be like, what is your problem? But then I was like, do not feed into that, to that energy. You, you feel like you, I would, like, what would, what would it take for you to fight somebody? It would take a lot because I generally don't put my energy into people like that. I yeah. don't give you that power to get me mad because when I get mad, I get really mad. Oh, sorry, I hit the mic. It would take you touching me for sure. Okay, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's a, that's but honestly, if somebody coming for me. Because, you know, when I, I hear these like kind of stories in my head, I'd be like, yo, I want to stop this person. But I know myself. In the moment, I'm not. No. Like, I don't, I'm not as ever a person to, like... Yeah, I'm not a fighter, honestly. But some people are. But no, I just yeah. not. Especially in the Caribbean. Like, yeah. Because what do you mean? You just push down my bike. How you mean? <laughs> I'm telling... And I wouldn't have fighter, but I would have pushed her. And if she pushed me back, oh, well, I'll walk away. But because I in the wrong, because I push her. But she in the wrong because she pushed on my fucking bike. Yeah. But it's just a level of like, no, I don't buy. It takes me a lot to, to actually fight somebody. I don't. I yeah, remember. I, in, I never fight any. You ever fight anybody? Yeah. I, sm- I fight in small school. What small school? Primary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you don't call it small school? <laughs> Y'all don't. <laughs> wait. Wait. Y'all look called primary school, small school? We just call it elementary school or primary oh, fuck. school. Anyways, I like fought in small school. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is our first. I thought everybody knew small school is primary school. Oh nah, God. okay, guys, in the comments, please let us know if you use That's small safer, school. That's probably. Probably. Oh my God. Because the school is small. Shut up, girl. The island is small. <laughs> Shit. But, um, yeah, no, because they had this bully. He know who he is. And me, he always was in it, always. And they had his sheep, and they had a girl in class, and I used to wear two pictures. Not his sheep. And she was his sheep because why are you going? He'd say, jump, you jump. So <laughs> <laughs> I had pigtails. And so I had like pigtails and two puffs. Mm-hmm. And he tell her to go pull my hair. Mind you, I'm minding my business. Uh-huh. And these people used to do some, some fat foul shit like i used to have um kool-aid or iced tea lipton mm-hmm. iced tea and i always bring in a big bottle of water but it's iced tea or kool-aid mm-hmm. you know they put malt in it and everybody know i hate malt one day yeah. i drink in that and i just tasted malt and i almost threw up i was like are you wild but anyways um yeah i was a bit bullied <laughs> but um the girl come pull my hair but when i tell you she pulled my hair girl you know who you is if you watch this we cool now but you know who you know who he is. <laughs> she take my pigtail and she whim down. Like I was on the floor. She just pulled me down to the floor. And I remember the teacher, teacher Albert, he get up and he sent her out to the class. But I was upset. So I was uh-huh. like, wait till after school. So we have all school buses, right? And you got a bus that goes to the Windward side, which is one side of the island and uh-huh. the bottom. I live the bottom. So uh-huh. I would take the bottom bus. This time I take the Windward side bus. <laughs> I say, fuck that. I take it the way we're side bus. I go on her bus and she come in the bus and I take her head. And you know how you have them seats? Mm-hmm, the, and you scooters. have the handle behind the seat? So I don't know how all your bus is built, but you have the bus seats. And then behind bus seats, you have like a handle. We That's have handles bougie behind. Buses? <laughs> there was a bit bougie. I mean, you only need like five. <laughs> like, no, you uh, there are five buses. But anyways, I take her head and I just start... One it in the handle Yeah not that bad guys I didn't have that much strength So she didn't die But I Yeah but Wow Yeah No because I was pissed nah, and I, I tell you. Arnie, How old she, you was Small school Nah it was 6th grade So I was like 12 Okay no, that's kind of old Yeah I, I could have known better Sorry mommy You going to hear this too <laughs> Yeah because the last episode My mother didn't know the UK story Now she hear it But Yeah she uh, happens yeah. At least I stood up for myself I'm yeah, sorry true. No I never had any fights no. I've got bullied I used to get bullied a lot But my mother was like I know I know she not going for it Like this boy used to tease me And I went home and tell my mother And my mother had no He lived town mm. Oh My mother drive to town <laughs> Until she find this boy. Oh, but I, I wasn't in the mother. car. And then mm. she come back home. And I was like, what are you telling him? She was like, if you ever, if my daughter have to come home mm-hmm. and I have to hear mm-hmm. that you ever put your hands on her or tell her anything one more time, it's going to be me and you. Okay, good. Okay, and that's exactly how my mother talk, if you know how my mother yeah. just talk. Like, that was the most yeah. anything. Like, I don't know. But even in and I almost fight it. And well, I borderline. Fight. Okay, I'm not a fighter, guys, but this yes. was in Villa Talia. Huh? Yes. I can't remember. It was this cupboard or to them. Like, I feel like we used to go this a lot. 
Probably but it was like it had a downstairs. Club V. I think it was Club B. V. Is close to black. Yes. Club V. It's now called Munch. Oh. Yeah. But, but they used to have a lot of stuff there, right? A lot. This girl, like, she literally was just like, she pushed me. Like, she wanted to move. And so, she, you know, in Holland, like, in for some reason, people have no manners here. They don't. They would just push you out the way. Yeah. And I'm so aggravated right now because it's like, COVID come and people lose their manners. When you come in on, that. when you have to board a train or a tram <gasps> or a metro, wait on for the, the people to come out. On the side. You, like, wait. Why are you standing in the middle? People can't pass. But nowadays people just coming in. Ugh, like the I doors open it. and they just coming it. inside. And it's like, where did the manners them. go? Because yeah. it wasn't like this before COVID. No. I really realized this since COVID because like, people went home and then just completely forget. Yeah. And for the people who don't know, like with trains, metros, you have when a door opens, you have to let people out first and you have to stand on the side. And when the last person's out, then you can start going in. But, but now but also people are just it don't going make in. sense because how are we going to go in and come in at the same exact. time? The metro full and you won't come in before we get out. How and I can just the prolong metro? the time. Yeah. It had a time, like people was, I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and then they look at me like, oh, sorry, what? I was like, Thank you. And then I just keep walking. Anyway, yeah. what was talking about? We, bye. That's a good question. <laughs> oh, oh, Villa Italia. Yes. Club V. She pushed me because she's trying to pass. And I just push her back. Yeah. And then after, like, um, all her friends was, they was ready. But then all my male friends was standing up right there. And they was just, they was like, they kept yeah. themselves. And it was like, never mind. I was like, okay, good. Mine were bad, though. But I'm, guys. Mommy, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we was at Club Villa Italia. Uh -huh. And everybody who goes Villa Italia know Villa Italia is where people go to show off. Is where the man them with the big waggies go to buy big bottles and just stand and look good. Nobody really goes there mm -hmm. for vibes. And I was there because they had this big, um, some show or whatever. And I was going to the bathroom, but I was with my friends. And this guy come and he just grabbed me and he didn't let me go. He was trying to talk to me, but he gra like he grabbed my arm and I, you could see I wasn't comfortable. And I'm telling him to let me go. And now I'm getting upset. Mm -hmm. So now it's like I'm going to fight him because I kind of push him. Mm -hmm. But my friends see it and two of the friends was guys. They jump in and then they start fighting. And I just put in a little two cents. This was recently? No, this was time ago. This was like when I was like. 19 oh, or something okay. uh -huh. yeah i put my two oh, cents shit. so technically i didn't fight but yeah we all had to leave the club <laughs> yeah no but the guy <laughs> deserved it i'm sorry nah, like, nah the level of disrespect was a oh bit. no it had a time what recently where somebody was also holding you but that's why what's wrong oh with this yeah that's why i thought this is how it was like i that's know how why. i say i'm not a fighter but all of these things oh. no but i don't like to fight i don't fight I'm nah. not a fighter. No, I know. <laughs> I'm a lover. <laughs> sometimes you just end up in situations, you Yeah, know? sometimes you do. And, but um, this made me realize that I was going to tell you that, like, I realized my ADHD. Like, I really, I was going, I went to the doctor once to get the test, but the waiting list in Den Haag is so long to, to get the test in. disgusting. Because I, I definitely have this. So, what, talk to me, because I ain't going to lie, I have some theories on ADHD. And, okay, I know. I feel like you have it. My mother was like, Jodie, study psychology. I was like, she did not. Mommy, I want to study psychology though. I'm telling you, if somebody had to ask me what would you be if you wasn't an entrepreneur, I would be a scientist in the area of like neuroscience. And, mm -hmm. and I could still do it. Maybe, you, yeah, I was about I could to still say. Because I keep I telling myself like you could still do it. But yes, yeah, talk no, to me. I've come to realize like it's really bad. And like at what level is it just a, a sloppy person? Or I have ADHD. And that's my, like, take on it. Because uh, they all, like, I come home from work, and I was like, so I just leave all of this open on the kitchen this, oh, <laughs> shit. So this morning. Oh, yeah. shit. I know myself. I know I probably open it. I know they're trying to rush and to go pack my bag. Mm -hmm. And then I know I went to go and doing this, and I know, and, and, and I probably just was like, oh, I gotta go bathe. Yeah. And then after I went and get ready, and then I leave my house. So yeah. I come home, and then all these things just do on And I just, like... You need to get it together. But then it's like, can I, I can't blame stoppiness on having ADSD. Like, you just really need and to get it together. Thing. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to hear my take on it. Because there's, some, there's times I told myself I have ADHD. Yeah. But for me, I genuinely feel like, like, okay, wait, let me really guard on my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I know it's a mental 
they say is a mental disorder mm-hmm. and I know a lot of people have a lot of cases of like where it's really extreme mm-hmm. and I don't want to say this not considering that but there's a level of I feel like ADHD is just a way we are in the world right now and people have it at different levels mm-hmm. and it's met with different symptoms mm-hmm. and it ranges but I feel like it's the level at which we just haven't evolved to what we live in now and to kind of go off of that I was listening to something where it said like we have so much convenience, but yet so many people feel inconvenienced. And we have so much things that supposed to save time. An elevator is supposed to save you time so you don't have to take the stairs, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But yet we don't have time. And for me, that's why I am going to buy an island in the future. <laughs> my, my words, people, when I buy an island, I'm going to play this podcast on the island for the people. Then. But to just take it back to simplicity, because I feel like ADHD is a byproduct of us having so much stimulation outside. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of, what does it stand for? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity mm-hmm. Disorder. Everybody, it's just like lactose intolerance. Mm-hmm. I feel like everybody have it, just at different levels. We have so much things that distract us and we also have so much things that fuck up our cognitive thinking mm-hmm. in the sense of like, kids don't really write anymore and that's really good for your executive mm-hmm. function. But also, we don't have to remember shit. We don't have to remember people's numbers. We don't have to remember people's birthdays because we have a phone to remind us. Mm-hmm. And I think the level of attention is not that we don't have enough. We have too much and we don't know how to like yeah. control it because there's so many things that you could just move your attention to. Back then you could move your attention to one tree and then another tree and then maybe a pond, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and a rock. Nah, I no, hear you. but like, yeah, yeah. I feel like it, I, I hear what you're saying. I feel like that's why it is. She gets in worse. I feel like it was definitely always there because oh, I put my phone on blast. But um, because <laughs> me and my brother, we my brother is so me and my brother had the conversation about we both feel like we have ADHD. I think yeah. his one is a bit more confirmed than mine. Yeah. But then we were just observing our parents and realizing which one we probably get it from. I'm not gonna put which they one on blast. They do say it's genetic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think on that because us growing up. We get we get involved with social media and like all those it was stimulations mm-hmm. later on in life. But like why they described to me above me just now in the kitchen, I know I was at that from small. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, what was I there wasn't much it was st- stimulation at that time. Makes sense. But then even our parents, like definitely I know where they grew up and how they grew up. Definitely ain't had like what you say. We had the trees in the ponds, but like <laughs> yeah, I was really taking it back, back. But like they ain't had much overstimulation, but it was definitely already there. Even simple things like you know, like starting a study and not having the kind the mental capacity to like sit down and finish something, and then just going to our next project and then going to our next yeah. project. Like people don't understand that like, even those simple stick things sometimes thing. is like your brain just don't have the capacity sometimes to do that and stick out to like true stuff Mm. but just like and that's something i think that's generational that's probably been going on for years but it's just getting worse and i realized like i was observing my class my homeroom class the other day and like they literally and i know we was like this like in school too like the teacher will be talking you just have a conversation while you're talking but i realized they just they really just can't, like, help it. And I know exactly, and it's so funny because like, I know exactly which students have ADHD yeah. just by observing the room mm. and, like, what it capable of. Like, this girl, she just really just start talking and I said, like, can you please look at And she can get up and just start fixing something on the wall. Yeah. And then, like, she can take out her, like, the other day, she took off her fruits in the middle. It was the first hour. It was on Friday. She took out her fruits out of the bag and she just sat observing each fruit. And she said, oh, um, do you want to try the fruit? And then she got up and then she went sit back down. And after I was just like, you okay? She was like, I think, like, I have ADHD. I was like, I think so too. But, like, yeah. but then what's so funny is I know her parents raising her really strict, which, like, she's not allowed to have a phone. Ooh. Like, very strict Muslim, etc., yeah. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And it's just, like, I do think it definitely exists, but I think what you're saying is that, like, that definitely not helping it. No. But I do feel also, like... Sorry, but, like, education and the system how it's set up i don't feel like it helps it either because you have some kids who just can't learn in that yeah that but you guys turn your school they have different types of schools though like they have schools where it's like you have traditional school but they have schools where people children like you, maybe you teach for like 15 minutes and then you allow yeah. them to just yeah. schedule the day as it goes on mm. but yeah 
that would have you have to have the means and stuff to send your child to the school. But also the the system in this country, like I don't know if you know, is like that. You choose your five schools, five school, and mm-hmm. you gotta hope you get into your first. You don't oh. get to the first. You gotta hope you get into the second, and you gotta hope you get into the third. Yeah. So it's not even like you guarantee to send your child to school that you know it's best for them. Yeah. They might not get in. Yeah. Basically. So yeah. What was saying? Wow. See. ADHD. We're talking about ADHD. <laughs> and I just realized, like, I think is a lot of, of it is training myself to not, like, now when I open something, it's training myself to be like, put it, it right back. But I see, I feel like that's what we learned from young too, because I don't feel like I was the cleanest person in terms of, like, I was a bit messy. Mm-hmm. Like, if I use stuff in the kitchen, my parents would have to be like, you know, put it away, put it back. Mm-hmm. Like, that's stuff we learn. But I just feel like, I don't know, sometimes you just take, I don't know, you get lax where it's like... Mm. Yeah, but I realize some people find it, like, they have it in them to really continue it. And I feel like yeah. the, the, the the click of, like, not having it sometimes is where then your brain just... Yeah. I, like, I... You know, I just be, like, scared to speak on it sometimes because I just don't know how yeah. other people experience stuff. But for me, I just realize, like, I just need to become more disciplined. Mm-hmm. In a sense of, like your brain don't listen to your words or it don't listen to your thoughts as much as it listens to your actions. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like I need to force myself to keep... Like, one of the things I changed long ago in my life that changed my life a lot is anytime, say, I would need to pick up something, say something's out of place, mm-hmm. I put it in place one time. Like, yeah. even if I didn't just take it out of place, if I just see out of place, I just put it in place. Yeah. And then it becomes, like, a thing where you don't even have to think about doing it. But I think so much times, like, now these things, if if it was just normal... To not really let up, like pay attention to it. It's just a trend of like your body's like, I don't really want to do that. Could be. But I think even the fact that you have, you able to do that, somebody with like extreme ADHD just can't. Yeah. And then it's just, uh, or just even certain levels of ADHD that your brain just, the brain is just, as you say, a lot of times just so powerful. Yeah. Like if you're just not able to do something and not able to do something. Yeah. And I realize that we just underestimate like how much of that. Because even like, in the educational aspect like I have certain students it's like the other students like why you don't just send this child out to the class but I know that like this person have ADHD so I can't just keep sending them out to the class every yeah, time not they're help. not able to concentrate and like because it's like that it really not and I know they can't help it like yeah. I have this one boy like I <laughs> I just want to send him out every day Yeah, but he really can't help it and then it's just like and I, w- I would love to see how he is in 10 years, really and truly. I feel like he's the type where it's like, I'm sorry, I know I'm not a fan of medicine, but he really going to need that. Yeah. But it's really bad. Ooh. And then it's just like, yeah, the amount of training not going to help that. So yeah, because in my like, head, I used to think like, like a theory I had on it, but I don't know how bad it affects people's brains. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Because they do say the brain of somebody who has ADHD is different from the brain of somebody who doesn't. It. it definitely So is. it's just that level of like, I'm not a doctor and I would actually like to have a doctor on the couch. You see the really episode with Diary of a Serial with a man who explaining that? The, he look a bit like, like a, like a grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't, I watched, I think a while back, so I didn't really see all of it. Oh, I thought you had it, it was recent. I had to check. By recent for me, it's like a month. I don't know if it was no it was not recent then oh no but like people like that would really want to talk to because they right? study the brain yeah but so what i like thought of it and that's why i say i don't know how it affects people to really think on it like that but in my head i was like adhd is almost like your addiction to nicotine in a sense and it's not the same thing but it's just that level of like when you start to put um systems in place that reduce the nicotine you get withdrawal symptoms Mm -hmm. and it's a level of like with adhd it's an addiction to things that different things that stimulate your attention Mm -hmm. and when you start to withdraw it you get symptoms like withdrawal symptoms and in my head i was thinking like for people who have adhd is it a thing of like could we create an environment where we're less stimulated like go on a dopamine detox for example because they say one thing that affects ADHD is your dopamine levels mm-hmm. and I feel like a lot of the reasons people have ADHD is because their dopamine baseline is so low that they need to continue to feed it or it's so high that they need to continue to feed it to keep it I up there I hear you but I don't think I think like on certain levels it's just that's really just how they brainwired and I think even if you put them in a room with like 
at least like the least stimulation like they're going to like probably go crazy and no but it's not a thing of like they not that they don't have stimulation in the room it's more of a thing of staring their focus to see things to see other things that stimulate them if that oh it's hard it's hard to explain but in a sense of seeing that if their baseline is up here and the things that stimulate them up here is like different objects and whatnot mm-hmm. but having a healthy baseline would be here and the things that would stimulate them is like listening to a song or maybe just listening to a documentary to kind of adjust or let them acclimate to like that level of stimulation again because their stimulation is able to get so high because of the world we live in now mm-hmm. you can't get stimulated by so much if that would be a thing where it's like, okay, this I is a... I don't know. Because then I think in a, like, this student, like, you could put on, you could do something they they, they stimulated by in the sense of, like, the interest they are to the level yeah. where it's like they're going to keep concentrated, you mean? Yeah, but also you would have to keep doing it because they would need to pass that withdrawal symptom phase. Because I feel like sometimes if we approach a situation in the beginning, it doesn't work out and we automatically think, oh, this ain't going to work out. Mm. But it's a level of, like, when you have withdrawal, if you don't have nicotine anymore, that lasts for time. And it's not like a crazy long time, but you have to keep restricting yourself from that nicotine. So it's also that same approach where you have to keep restricting yourself from that dopamine so that you could readjust your baseline to a level that's healthy again. I am not a doctor, so I don't know yeah. if that would be an approach, but I that's how I think. I think on like maybe for certain individuals, but I think for like certain cases, like that's not going to like rewire it. Rewire like, the brain. No. We need a doctor on the couch. Like, I am proper curious. Yeah, but it depends because some doctors would just be like, yeah, medicine is the answer and some might just be like, you know, training your brain is the answer. So it depends on who you're talking to. But no, I just realized that about myself and then like, even to like, the, the, the part of the discipline part, like, I stop by going back to the gym. But I realized it's like, Hot, yeah. I have to tell myself like the most ridiculous things to go. Yeah, you gotta gaslight yourself a little bit. Into going to yeah, the gym. but I feel like I okay, should. Okay, what are have... these ridiculous things? Though I'm curious. I don't, I don't... <laughs> the class wants to know. No, I can't share all. Okay, okay, no. Like I would just be like, for one of those things is like being on Instagram and seeing because now my algorithm mm. again filled with a bunch of girls in the gym. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but like they have this thing going on trending right now that's like I want my goal this year is to for people to think I have a BBL and like yeah, that is I what saw. in my head like. If I don't go to the gym today, they're not going to attribute to me mm. feeling like I have a BBL. Mm. So I need to go to the gym today. But I feel like why should I have to tell myself these things and, mm, to sorry, go? Continue. Whereas like, you know, yeah. it should just be a thing to go to the gym because it's good for your health. It is. And you know what helps me go to the gym? I told my sister this the other day because I feel like, and it makes sense because when I started going to the gym, it was the same thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted my body to get bigger and my waist to get smaller. Mm-hmm. Print. But it's a level of like, um, when I attached a internal goal, but one that really was strong. So for me, I, I really see the gym now as a place where I could push my limits, but also literally train my mental as I train my physical, because mm-hmm. I strength train. So there's a lot of cases where I put myself under so much pain, mm-hmm. but I still fight through it. And I think for me, that reason is so important to me because I know in my life, mm-hmm. I will have the same kind of experiences, but just not with a weight. It might be with a business venture yeah. or, you know, with a relationship. And it's just that level of me realizing that me going to the gym allows me to further work on this but also take myself out of just being in the gym for my body, hit different and it allows me to go to the gym more. And that's what I feel like a lot of people, that's what causes a lot of people to fall off. Where it's like, a lot of us say we go in gym, we say we go and get his body, this and that, but that takes time. I've been in the gym Mm -hmm. for two years now and I'm still not where I want to be. And I've been on and off, so it hasn't been consistent, but still, it's just that level of like, if that was my goal, after a month and I don't see nothing, mm-hmm. I would have fall off. And that's the thing. After a month and you don't see nothing, you fall off. But after a month, I knew in my mind that I was stronger. And I knew in my life that I was mm-hmm. getting better at just going through life. Because yeah. I was more disciplined. And I think that's what helps you go to the gym. You do have to gaslight yourself though sometimes. No, but like it definitely, I don't, I don't want people to think it's just a, how you look on next year. It definitely is an internal thing too of like 
the discipline and showing up and da da da. But I do feel like there's certain times like you have you have to tell yourself ridiculous things yeah. to be motivated to do things at a certain yeah. time. And I realized that. Cause to me the internal thing is like, yeah, I'm going, going to Zobi so be okay. I think last year just threw me off because I went to Martin three times. Yeah. And that just Fuck you. We really got to stop. Sorry, causing. sorry. But I realize sorry. we cuss a lot, Jody. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> episode, are you our accountability partners? Like when yeah. we cuss, call us out. I know some of you like it when we cuss, but we really trying to stop. You know what's so funny? I didn't know you. I showed up here today. I didn't know she was going to say this. And then the receipts have a swear jar in our swear jar. Can no. we have a swear jar? No. Oh. <laughs> because I, I can go broke. We're going to be broke for sure. But we really got to stop. But we on YouTube. Not we don't have a YouTube. bracelet. Every time we cuss, we got to flip that. No, flat. we could do a saving jar. Yeah, let's see. I don't know. know. Same thing, though. Yeah, we're going to show Aida dry hair. And then after like a month, that thing will be full. <sighs> yes. But, but um, yeah. no, like I just realized there's certain things that you really got to tell yourself to do it. And it's sometimes the most ridiculous thing, but maybe it's going to work. But at the same time, you do got to work on the yeah. mental path. But then I also watch um, You Are What You Eat. Oh yeah, tell me. But you know what's so crazy? Like I could be way more motivated with what I put into my body than going to the gym. Like a lot of people feel Which like it's good because that's a lot of people feel like of it. yes, but a lot of people feel like the hard part is the gym, the food. I mean, it is for me. At least. For me, it's not. For me, it is, but mainly because I need to eat more calories than normal mm-hmm. well we bulk we tall, mm-hmm. so it's a level of like the jerk because I'm trying to bulk. Guys, I thought I was bulking. I haven't been bulking. Mm-hmm. Like, based on the calories that I'm supposed to eat, the protein I'm supposed to intake, I did more research and I've been trying. But for me, it is a bit difficult because I don't want eating to become a thing that's a task. I like to eat. And they have this book that says you should eat to 80% of what you of fullness. Yeah. Because is that in the, the show? Yeah, because they have... The funny thing is they do a test on twins. They put one twin on a vegan diet and one on a... Meat oh. eating diet. Yeah, I forget what read word is. Non vegan. I think it's an O. Maybe Christian. Omnivore. Knows. Omnivore diet. Oh, okay. But they make it like it's junk food. It's just yeah. they have an omnivore diet. And one of the twins, he trying they both trying to bulk. But of course the one that vegan checking like no, he gotta eat more and he already had an issue with like he don't want he don't like to have to force himself to eat. Yeah. But the the dietitian was like, That's literally what you gotta do. Like people people it have is. this you really gotta watch it like people I have it but they talk about all aspects of stuff like even like where the food come from but of course to a level this is America so like the the way the food comes is from way, way way worse places yeah but um just they touch on everything but I realized that like I don't know like I really just I, I could be about to put something into my mouth but then that click just be like this not helping the BBF <laughs> Oh, you mean as in what you eat? Yeah, they don't. No, for me, the what you eat aspect is great. It's the how much. But also that. For real? What do you mean? As in, like, I guess for different people in different journeys, some people it's hard to eat less and some people it's hard to eat more. For me, it's hard to eat more. Mainly because Mm -hmm. I like enjoying what I eat, not to the point where I feel like I'm in a food coma. Whereas, like, you have the food coma approach where it's like, oh, you just ate and you're ready, you know? But I don't like to feel... But you don't have to fool yourself. But I think you would just have to eat more, a lot, like... Every- exactly. I have to eat more times of the day. Yeah. And it's just a level of, like, that's what I mean. I don't want eating to become a... T- but I have to. Print. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you should watch it because that was one of the things. But for me, it's like, I find it funny, though. Because it's like, how I have the discipline to watch what I eat, but not... But no, I've been going gym now. When once I started, it's really yeah. good. Plus, it's that level like you have the discipline to recycle the cardboard, but you still using plastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like you can't really. But it still highlight a lot of things that just like you learn so much things like that. They have fat that's just really on your organs as worse, and the fat yeah. that right there by your skin, and just how like make me question like where the food come from for real yeah. but i do feel a little better that we live in in, in europe yes well, but in the it Netherlands. still make me feel like maybe it's i don't know what because like they were talking about salmon and like salmon farms is even worse than like chicken farms and cow farms 
Oh, no. And then it's just like, but then I was telling my colleague about this too. And she was like, to a certain level, like these things doesn't make you feel good about yourself because realistically, the stuff that's better for you is just way more expensive. So then yeah. it's like, you still can't really afford a lifestyle where you can afford all the goods. And that's what they're doing to you. Yeah. Even if you look at the trees in the Netherlands, I will never get over this. I think it's so freaking wild that in Western countries, they take out the female trees. And you know, that's why you get hoi courts, right? Um, Hay fever. It's because these male trees have so much pollen and there's nothing to pollinate because there's no women. So mm. the, you have excess, like tree sperm, and it's messing Just us up. Over, yeah, yeah. hoi courts was never a thing back. Or even in the Caribbean, do we get hoi courts? Not really. I don't get hurt here fever in general. But Yeah, me either. Um so. no, in the Caribbean you don't but it's also just that level of like we can't produce our not that we can't but they make it hard for you to make your own stuff because now you rely on them and that's what scares me because now I eat in bio like I'm moving more to bio mm -hmm. so I get bio eggs because a big thing for me was the meat I eat they needed to be happy before they died so like halal? huh <laughs> yeah so like the chickens needed to be outside yeah. living life mm -hmm. the cows living life not in no what they call it, a koi yeah yeah a cage yeah oh yeah so that's what like I'm really focused on. But even bone broth, I'm really trying to change my diet. So I'm going to watch it. Okay, but should. sometimes it's hard. Like even in the Netherlands, like the thing you say about salmon and chicken. But it even highlight like how the salmon we buy making me question if that's really good because technically that's the color that they see. Oh god, it's artificial, and like salmon and should actually salmon. be more red. But then. You know when it's more red, I think it's bad. But it's actually when it's more pink. Because apparently, like, they just dye it that color and they just can't get it to the actual red. But then I, like, you know. It is crazy. To, even they say even some bio products is not really bio. Like, they yeah. tell you it's bio, but like it you would actually have to farm. go to, like, and they have that in this, in, a, in this country, that you could go to a farm market. Yeah. But like where they actually get the stuff I was too. looking for them But there's one And it's really far from And me. they always far out yeah. Because they buy a farm <laughs> That is actually <laughs> but, crazy though Yeah I don't watch it Yeah But I was just like wow Wait I was gonna ask you though With the gym Like what's the What Since you started your journey What's like your favorite Just to highlight Because one thing I do Is I remind myself Of the things I love the most About mm -hmm. the gym Like what is your Proudest moment from the gym mm -hmm. and then your favorite thing about the gym my proudest moment like about just going gym yeah in general because you've been on it i think i messaged you the other day and you voice note me or something or you call me and you're like, yeah, yeah i'm in really the gym now going. i just think like going for on vacations and trying to keep up is just, that don't help but yeah i probably had to show up but it's easy for me to go and literally my job is right next to my favorite gym Girl, but what am i proud it. of i proud of the other day they are one of these men are, you know those men are always in the gym no matter when you yes, do they are yes. he finally <laughs> come to me he was like you just really train hard now and then like I finally asked him his name he yeah. asked me my name and he was like we gotta train one of these days together I was like no problem and I was acting so chill but when he walked off I was like <laughs> <laughs> I love that <laughs> but then it just made me feel like okay I'm not doing shit and yeah. I'm doing well so I was proud of that mm -hmm. to know that like I'm doing Your thing. well I'm doing mm -hmm. my thing and what were you what was actually? Like what you love most about the gym? As much as the gym could be I do like that, like I'm not gonna lie, since I've been going consistently, I definitely just in all aspects of my life just way more focused and like have mental clarity. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, when I wasn't going, I was feeling like my life was just this discombobulated. <laughs> yeah. Not like hearing. literally. And I feel like now I have the space to like mm -hmm. <sighs> I hear like it, it. As to, uh, yeah. to my life. You well, know. just remind yourself. Yeah. Or me. But like this weekend, we were supposed to go today. And then I like, I had changed yeah. my schedule for that. So yeah, now I feel plus. like, <gasps> I forgot to talk to you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, When you came in, we had to speak about something. I know the people that I'm going to uh -huh. be upset because you ain't going to know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So um, for me, what am I most... <laughs> I don't think <laughs> it's how you go over the mic to scratch your nose <laughs> um what am i most proud of how strong i am mm -hmm. your girl is strong guys like mm -hmm. you can't you can't see the biceps <laughs> but your girl is strong like i think that's one thing for me that just yeah it makes me feel so good because it took me a minute i was scrawny mm -hmm. like especially when i just moved nl i was really skinny and i feel like yeah i wanted to get thicker but i think seeing the muscle makes me really proud like 
Yeah, that. What I love most about the gym, having those interactions with other women. Recently, I had mm-hmm. it where um, a girl, she was in the gym and she didn't really know how to use the machine. And I, I'm going to tell y'all, that happens in the beginning. I think that's what scared me to go to the mm-hmm. gym in the beginning. But we've all been there. So I went to her and I like, tell her how to use it. And but you just out of yourself first or she asked? No, I went. I just be so scared to do that. N- yeah, because for me, I feel like sometimes they might think like, oh, I don't need you. Yeah. That, yeah, that was... Because I did a girl was doing RDS and I was like... That ain't how you do it, baby girl. Yeah. Because she was basically just squatting. But I think to myself... <laughs> fuck up. But I, I know those ones. But I think to myself... Sometimes in those moments when I'm scared, I think I wouldn't want somebody to tell me to. Because I see videos of myself in the gym and I'm like, what the fuck were you doing? Mm -hmm. And when you think like that, you do it out of that intention. And if she's upset with it, that's her business. Mm -hmm. At least I know, like, Mm -hmm. okay, I just wanted to help. But yeah, I love those moments. Even interactions with guys. Guys see me doing pull-ups and I I get that level of like, yo, Mm -hmm. you're doing your thing. Yeah. And I don't know. For me, it's just the dynamic of the gym. At least the gym I go to. Well, I change gyms now, but the one in Rotterdam, I find a good communities in there. Mm-hmm. In Amsterdam, I sorry, Belmer, or oh, you just have a bunch of kids. It's scary. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that. No, I think so too. Like yeah. you are strong for real. But um, yeah. Back to the overstimulation. I I know I taking it back back because there was this thing. I went to a conference, mm-hmm. right? And it was like yeah. a millionaire mind conference. Mm-hmm. I should not mention them because I actually come for them. I'm not really going come for them because it was on a guys. It was a good conference. Uh-huh. Uh, what happened? No, 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 no. Oh, it was a really good conference. Like, they really focus on the mental aspect of how you approach finance. And you have different personalities. You have the spenders, the savers, the monks, the avoiders. Mm-hmm. I was a monk. But uh-huh. there was just different aspects of the seminar. And it was a three-day seminar every day, 11 hours. So it was actually crazy. Mm-hmm. But it was really good. And the location was insane. I saw where it was. It was more... And Dee was sitting with me. She was like, this is where all you met. I was like, oh my God. It was really cute. <laughs> and you do get to meet a lot of people. But there's a level of like, some of you guys, and I think it's really beneficial to go to seminars and stuff like that. But a part of me was like, if you're not conscious enough, these people could hook you. And they could hook you to benefit them. Mm. And I do think what these people doing are good, but there's what they doing that's good, and there's their approach to doing it for mm-hmm. money. Like it is there; they are doing stuff for good, but their their desire for the your pocket yeah. is higher. And I noticed that because it's they have this one millionaire mind, but then they have a bunch of other seminars, and this happens throughout the year, all over Europe, all over the world actually, because it's really big. And in each day. Each day we had, they're selling you a different seminar that they have. Mm. And look, this is normal. People do it. You pivot, you, you know, plug in different stuff so that you could get marketing down. The people already here, you know, you got a target market. But it's just a level of like, I met people who've been to the other ones. And my thing is like, how do you not have like a crazy business or how are you not financially free? Mm. And I get it because in my head, I'm thinking like about 5% of the people going to take action who are here, which is just how we are as humans. But it's just a level of like, it's scary to see how overstimulated we get without knowing. Because these people are like, oh my God, yeah, I went to this one, I went to this one. But what did you do though? Mm-hmm. Is your life now becoming going to seminars to learn about something you're not taking action but on? I think some people feel like the fact that they're showing up to go to the seminar, seminars mean that they're doing right by their life. Yeah. But it's like, mm, you have no. to apply what you're learning at the seminars. And the people them on the stage gaslighting you to Gas- thinking that this yeah. is what you should be doing. Because they keep saying... Those who make it in life finish where they start. Mm-hmm. So a big thing for them is like, you need to stay throughout the whole seminar. By the end of the seminars, they just sell you the other seminars. Mm. You know? Yeah. So it's just that level of like, for me, I just had to reflect on stuff in my life where I'm thinking like, I have it with TikTok. Guys, I be scrolling through TikTok thinking I'm learning so much. And I am, but I'm not doing anything with it. If that mm. makes sense. Like, do you ever feel it where... Say you know so much about a topic, but it's just a level of like, okay, what do you do now? Yeah. But then I think sometimes I also feel like then... <sighs> I don't know. It's beneficial to have a podcast and then you can talk about stuff and what you know and stuff, like whatever, 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 yeah. whatever. But at the same time, I'll just be like, 
it's going to come when the time is right. Because I also don't want to, once again, overstimulate myself. I feel like I have to be able to do all these things at the same time. And I feel like when mm-hmm. the time comes in my life where I'm going to have to apply it, yeah, then it's going to come. Yeah, I hear that. If that makes sense. No, or try to apply it in sense. things I'm already doing. But, yeah, because like right now I don't have space to actually go and add another thing to what I'm already yeah. doing. And that's how I look at it. Because it's like, maybe something can come eventually where I can. It's true. Because a lot of my TikTok is stuff about relationships. And do I have a man? No. So, no, but it's just a level. But you have a mic. Oh, shit. Word, 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 word. But yeah. Yeah. That's how you could look at it. Yeah. It's just a level of like how you apply certain things. But no, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. And I get that. It was interesting. But yeah. You have a would you rather? Oh. Time for the would you rather. What's safer? <laughs> you the elevator music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, bong. I hope. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Would you rather constantly be sticky all over your entire body, or constantly be itchy all over your entire body forever? But. I always have to really understand. Um, sticky <laughs> in what way? Like, I am sticking to like this you, couch? Yeah, you, like, have a layer of or honey on you. I feel like I need to be. Yeah, bold. like, you're sticky, like, as if you have a layer of honey. I'd rather that. Then itchy? Ooh. Same. But then, like... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, anybody ever had a yeast infection? But, like, like, that level? <laughs> because... That shit? Like chicken pox. I didn't itch with chicken pox. So I can't relate. You lucky. I had it, but it wasn't like... Mm, like... No, but Like you, a mosquito bite. So like, nobody ever had a yeast infection? Yeah, I feel like a lot of women... But that it's was... It's quite common. Because it's like... If it's also like itchy there and there, like... All over. Once again. Your clit will be itchy, and I don't think no, we've ever felt like an itchy that? clit. No. You know what? I would hate my knuckles to be itchy. Like the knuckles of my toes or the knuckles mm. of my finger. Because that itchiness, I hate it. You know when like a mosquito bites you there? Yeah. I hate Yeah, stickiness all day. Sticky. But imagine you doing it, it's like... But it's just like you bait and it's like not, have, that's not helping, basically. Nope. You stick I'd forever. rather die then. I mean, y'all just stick stuff to me. I don't mind. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. And then... <laughs> would you rather have to pay for everything in pennies or use... A pogo stick as your main form of transportation. So if you need to get up <laughs> I, I to go to the stick. kitchen, <laughs> you have to pogo. Boy, boy, boy. You would need high ceilings, bitch. Because what the hell? Imagine that pogo stick into your car. So fun. It like, was. I was going to stick again, but I don't feel like getting up. I would do that too. <laughs> yeah. It's your main means of transportation. But everywhere? Everywhere. <laughs> That's unrealistic. If you in the theater, you have to pogo so stick out of Instead of walking, it. basically, you pogo <laughs> stick in. But if you get in a car, you put on the pogo yes. stick. Okay. Can't pogo <laughs> stick the brakes. <laughs> no. But yeah. I would pogo stick. Instead of paying everything in pennies. Yeah. That's Ooh. annoying us. Yeah, that's crazy. Didn't they have this petty thing where somebody got sued and they pay? They come through and pay yeah, everything with pennies. the pennies. Yeah. I would do that. That's petty. Yeah. So that's like, I can't even use Apple Pay. No. But I think that that's, yeah, no. Yeah. Both of them is unrealistic because Pogo in everywhere is actually wild. <laughs> like, they don't make things it's Pogo stick friendly. allowed to be good Pogo stick Yeah. Everywhere. But no, but I find it fun, so I'll do that. Yeah, no, me too. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, we'll be kids forever. <laughs> Yeah, but no matter. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was episode twenty six, and no, as I keep, oh, to sound like a dua el eutem enam, dua pula enam, dua pula enam, dua pula enam, yeah, enam, pull up, dua pula enam. Yo, I don't really like. We need to. Save that because I really like Dua Pula and Nam. But enam. Malay is cool. Like when I lived in Malay, Malaysia, damn. the language, like Satu Dua Tiga, like the way they speak is. That sounds like that ass. Me and my friend used to try to make a language. I think everybody tried to yes. make a language when yes. I was young. That sounds like it. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, nah. <laughs> me and Maya tried to make a lag and that's not like it. It's but nah, hell. man, this was episode two of Pula Inam. And Nam, thank you Hope guys for tuning in. Like, I forgot to say in the beginning. Share. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And subscribe. Please, thank you Watch all episodes. Yeah, because we had to like, watch them. Some of the things we said... As much as the last episode, we was like, oh, what will we take back? We also said a lot of, like, valid shit. You know, I was watching back old episodes, like, wow, I need that advice right now. Yo! <laughs> like, my own advice are coming up. Before. And I was just like, I forget. That Yo! I yeah. And you thinking it just sticks in you. It don't, <laughs> it guys. Don't. It don't. It so, really does. if you have time, look at our old shit. Yeah. Like, and if you want to really get a nice little summary of it, go to our last episode. And mm. you'll see some clips of our old stuff. And thank you guys for tuning in. We will continue to give y'all the vibes bi-weekly on Tuesdays. And we out. Bye. Do this. <laughs>